It's been quite a while since I've tested the Renault Kajar. And a lot of things have changed since then. For example, the uh, European Union does no longer think that diesel engines are as clean and nice to the environment as they thought they were. You remember the uh, diesel gate where, uh, well, Volkswagen had some not nice things attached to their cars and some other badges as well. So it's going to be time to get used to petrol engines again, like this uh, Renault petrol engine uh, with 130 kilowatts of power and 1.6 liters of uh, displacement. Well, Renault is still clinging to its um, downsizing policy, so everything has to be smaller and more efficient. But before we go test this engine, let's refresh our memory a bit and uh, look at the car from the outside and inside. It's been a year and a half since I first driven the Renault Kajar, the Captur's bigger brother, and it still looks good. The test model was equipped with LED headlights, which you can get with the two highest equipment packages. The front of the car is large and imposing, just what people want from bigger SUVs. It's not all about size though, as you can choose the optional large panoramic roof to entertain the rear passengers. I wouldn't really suggest any serious off-roading with the 19-inch alloys, although most of the owners will never undertake that with their vehicles. However, you can still get the Kajar with all-wheel drive if you choose the most powerful diesel engine. So what does a German engineer do when designing a car? Well, in the evening he doesn't go and sleep with his wife in the bedroom, he goes to his, well, little office and starts recalculating things a thousand times just to make sure that they're correct. So yes, this is 30 millimeters. Yes, this is correct. I've also checked this 12 times. So now I will need a gas spectrometer to check the molecular uh, consistency of this red color. A French engineer, on the other hand, in the meantime, does go to bed with his wife and he looks at her and basks in her, well, feminine glory. And then he uses that as inspiration for designing the car. Ah, oh, mon chéri, this car has beautiful lines, just like my wife. It is magnifique. <clears throat> yes, maybe. I have to say the French like to give attention to the design. Although fans of the big R-Link infotainment screen, which we know from the Talisman, won't have that choice here. I have to give special praise to the seats, which are excellently comfy with the more luxurious Renault models. But let's leave the Germans and the French to their devices now. They need some rest. And let's go test this car and the petrol engine. The driver won't be complaining about road visibility as the car is somewhat higher than most regular vehicles. The manual gearbox is not quite there though as the clutch is quite twitchy and unfriendly. to the whole point of this test, which we said was the petrol engine at the front. There are positives and negatives about this engine, just like everything else in life, like this powerful sun, for example, because I'm sweating like a pig. The, the positive is that the engine is quite quiet, especially at low speeds, low RPM. You'll really find it difficult to actually hear the engine. So it's very nice, relaxing and comfortable, uh, especially if you're driving, cruising through a city or, you know, on a road like this. 
On the other hand, it does mean that because the engine is small, 1.6 liters, it has a big turbo and 130 kilowatts of power, which means quite a big turbo uh, hole or a lot of turbo lag. For example, I'm in fourth now, I put my pedal to the metal, nothing's actually happening and I'm in two, at 2000 RPM. So you'll have to shift your gears up quite a lot and uh, push the engine into higher RPM if you want the power. And also there's the consumption, which we're sort of not used to anymore, high consumption any, anyway. Right now it's 7.8 liters per 100 kilometers, but of course that's because of the test. You'll probably get that to about seven, maybe six and a half liters per 100 kilometers. So, petrol engine, yes or no? Hmm. Yes, but only if you really want it, and only if you also choose the automatic transmission. The base model of the Kajar will be yours for 20,000 euros, while a fully equipped one with the most powerful diesel engine and all-wheel drive will cost you 32,500 euros.